Welcome back to Telltale, guys. I'm Emily. Greg. And today we are going to be discussing the short story, uh, Four-Sided Triangle. Yep. By William F. Temple. Yes. So, this one was... This one was a trip. This one was a soap opera. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned. And this is, a f this is not Temple's first story, but it's a fairly early story. And the interesting thing is that this is considered to be a, one of the great science fiction stories of 1939 by Isaac Asimov and my, Martin H. Greenberg. It is in this book. Um, it's, considered, it's considered to be one of the best stories of that year. And... Um, as I've as I've said in other videos, I've always had this notion of science fiction and the golden age in particular mm -hmm. being a very American thing. Yeah. William F. Temple is from England. He's English. <laughs> Good old and, English writers. Um, even more interesting is that this this story was published in Amazing Stories in nineteen thirty nine. Mm-hmm. And got the cover. Has yes, a really cool cover. It does. It um, was very nice. Later on, in the late 1940s, William Temple would expand it into a novel, which I haven't read. I've got a copy. I just recently bought it. I want to read oh, it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ooh. And when that novel was published, it made a big enough splash that it was made into a movie. Ooh. So there's a movie. It's hard to find these days, but there is a movie called okay. The Four-Sided Triangle that's based on his novel. Interesting. Okay. Good to so, know. you want to go with the synopsis? All right. So, Bill and Will both love Joan. Both in love with him. Bill is a lot more stable, cool, calm, and collected. Oh, no. Will is the stable one. Okay. Anyway, back to synopsis. Where were we? The three characters. Yes. They're in love with one another. No. They invent Bill a process. Bill and Will just love Joan. It's yeah. not even like... they're. N it's not... They're not in love with the... They're not polyamorous. <laughs> no. <laughs> but they are all scientists and they're all working in the same lab together. Mm -hmm. And at one point, they are trying... They're learning that they can replicate art, which is an interesting... And I want to stop yeah. there and bring up the point once again. All of you who think classic science fiction is totally chauvinist... It's not. Female scientists equal to the two male scientists in this story. Yes. And nothing... Anyway, you'll see. With the more I talk about this, and I'm not. I'm still not going to do it justice. It was a pretty no. good story. But, so, they find a way to, exactly to the molecule, replicate famous works of art and make a business out of it. But then the yeah. three of them are like, we just became... And it's like, a legitimate business. It's They're a, not... Yeah. Passing them off as originals. No, they, they are reproductions. Yes, they are reproductions <laughs> for people to be access fine art in its original form or as we as we know it form and can appreciate the arts. So it was mm -hmm. supposed to be for like furthering and making art more accessible to people who wanted it and kind of expanding cultural Yeah. You know, cultural norms. So, so they all become billionaires, Mark. Yeah. Artists. They're like freaking rich now, millionaires, but then Bill one day is like, you guys realize we just became like sellout business people and I miss being a scientist. Mm -hmm. Like, can we go back to the other idea that we had where we learned how to replicate living things? Yeah. And then, we'll... go But ahead. along the way, um, Joan and one of the scientists Will. get married. Yeah. Will and Joan drop the bomb that, well, we're getting married, Bill, and we want to mm -hmm. take some time off from being scientists and this. We kind of want to retire for a little while. And, and he's very good about it. Yeah, he's good. He's he's civil, but he internally is devastated because he was so in love with Joan, and of course he's the more passionate of the two. So he's having this inner turmoil about it, and it's just heart wrenching for him to be in love with Joan, but seeing the other, you know, seeing Will living the life he wanted. Mm -hmm. So after a time, as he's working out how he goes back to being a scientist. He is working on how to replicate life and actually make it live. Very, like, Frankenstein-style sort of thing going on there. Um, not necessarily... So he basically is, like, growing bunnies for a while. Yeah, but they but they aren't don't, living, so They aren't living. He's just growing them to the rats. molecule and trying to figure out how to make these bunnies live. Which he finally figures out about mm -hmm. halfway through the story. Mm-hmm. 
And as they're celebrating and really excited about it, he goes to Will and he's like, Will, I need to tell you something. Straight up confesses his love for Will's wife. And Will's like, oh, I didn't know you were this passionate about it. Like, I didn't know anything. If you had said something sooner, he's like, yeah, I was going to propose to her literally, like, at the same time you guys dropped the bomb on me Mm -hmm. about this. And so Will's like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. And then Bill goes, can I make a clone of your wife, (laughs) basically? And Will's like... it's not a clone, it's a duplicate. Yeah, a duplicate, yeah. Can I make a duplicate of your wife? And he's like, oh, I mean, if it's okay with her, I guess. Which, to me, is just absolutely outrageous. But anyway, like, for the drama that it caused, I'm glad it happened this way. So he asks Joan, and Joan gives consent. And then it cuts to some time after he has successfully made this duplicate. And he names the duplicate Doll. Mm -hmm. And Joan and Doll end up, like, at first being... Yeah, yeah. (laughs) At first they're really skeptical, but because they are literally the same person down to thoughts and feelings, they become best friends and, like, sisters. Like, twin sisters. And so... Then they start having this uneasiness going on, and the men are trying to figure out why these two women are having such a hard time. Like, their health is failing, they're depressed, on and off, like, and they seem to switch places as to why they're feeling this way. And then finally, one day, Joan's like, I think Don and Bill need to move in, and we need to just all live together, and so I can help take care of her, and keep an eye on her, and she can keep an eye on me, and we can have the symbiosis. A symbiotic relationship for our own mm-hmm. mental health and and of course at this point it should be apparent why it's called the four-sided triangle yes because there's four people involved of the love triangle but mm-hmm. it's four it's a love mm-hmm. square i don't know anyway so eventually one day will comes home and he's all like he meets, sees the women are like grasping each other sobbing on the couch and he's like what is going on you ladies have been having this mental health stuff and you're not telling us anything, and why are you guys like, what is going on? And finally, it comes out that Doll's in love with Will, too. Because <laughs> Joan and Doll are the same person, so of course, as an exact replica, she's in love with the same man. Yeah, because they, they both have all the same memories, too. Yeah. Right? Everything was perfectly duplicated. Yeah. So Will comes <clears> in, <throat> and he's like, well, I don't have time for this. Like, Bill's back at the lab with all this stuff going on. This is a huge thing for you to drop on me. I gotta go make sure his calculations are correct because he's trying to base it off memory and whatever. Then he turns around and the lab down the hill blows up and Bill's dead. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, (laughs) now I'm stuck here with these two women who love me and I only love Joan. Yeah. So he's just like, Spoilers are well. We already dropped a spoiler. Yeah. I think there's another spoiler coming. Yeah, there's up. So another if, spoiler. If you really want to read this story, should I not do the spoiler? Probably should. It just takes extra steps from there. Like it just keeps going and going and going into this downward spiral spiral of poor Will trying to handle these two women, and then like these two women just coming to consensus about taking matters into their own hands. It's very interesting. Definitely read it. It was very entertaining. The drama. Mm -hmm. This would be a great sci-fi soap opera. Like, (laughs) seriously. This was a soap opera beginning to end. Yeah, I wish I could come across the movie. I've got, like I say, I've got the novel that he expanded it into. I would really love to see the movie to see how that was done. Mm -hmm. If if it was done as well as as the original story. Yeah. Um, But this, this is one of those kind of problematical stories. Yeah. Because... When you look at the context of when this was published, 1939, and the sorts of stories that have been published before 39 in the science fiction magazines, especially amazing stories, um, this story was way better. A big leap forward as far as characterization is concerned. Mm -hmm. And a really cool example of how the scientific situation can be enmeshed with the character situation yes. so that you have a character it story a social that problem. is a science story. Yeah. <laughs> and know? it becomes a personal social problem. Yeah. So it's, it was really well done. And mm-hmm. again, this was another story. It made me feel a lot of things because I had a lot of empathy for the characters who are mm-hmm. dealing with this struggle. Like you think 
you know, I don't blame Bill for thinking, oh, I can just make a copy and have my own wife. And it's <laughs> Joan, but it's not Joan. Mm -hmm. But it is. Mm -hmm. And think that it's all going to work out. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> and I knew, I kind of knew up front, like, somebody had to die. And I knew it was probably going to be Bill. Because <laughs> he was the least favored character by yeah. the way it was written, which was obvious. Mm -hmm. um, the continuation of the story also did not surprise me. But I enjoyed the way it unfolded. Yeah. So it was just, it was a really entertaining read. And mm -hmm. it was, it was a, like a sci-fi romance mm -hmm. almost. Like it didn't feel yeah. that sci-fi-y, but no, it did. Really. It, yeah. It was, a, it was definitely a character story. It was. And but it was, it was also a science story. Yes. And it was really together. interesting. That's the way to do it. Yes. And it does bring up the really interesting concept that, yes, yeah, science does influence our personal lives a lot more than I think we realize. Technology mm -hmm. introductions being probably the more obvious one. Mm -hmm. But in this case, building a whole other person, like all the ways this could have gone, mm -hmm. it just brings up so many other like questions of morality. Um, it brings up a lot of the things we talk about when we talk about cloning yeah. and the ethics of cloning. Yeah. So, so interesting. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it, though. So Good. the problematical <clears throat> part of this, though, this is only a novelette. Yeah. And it was too short for me. Yeah. It didn't go. The characters could have been built a lot more. The yes. situations could have been built a lot more. The the science could have been explored a lot more. There's just so many ways this could have been expanded. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it was. I want to read that novel to see if he's resolved those issues when he expanded it into a mm -hmm. novel. Because the novelette version of this story just falls short in yes. so many ways. Yes. But like I say, in <clears throat> so many ways, it was way above what had been published before. Yes. So you, you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt and, and understand that, you know, well, nobody else had ever done anything mm -hmm. quite like this in 1939. Yeah. But it's still a better writer would have made the first story better mm -hmm. than this one yes so it falls short of a top tail for me but it is enjoyable and it is very interesting yes and i would say the same thing i definitely felt like i could have had more glad to know that there is more mm -hmm. um so i agree with that i also feel you know me and romances i don't really like romances that much they're not my forte i mean this was an enjoyable one because of the scientific element and the drama that brought up and it, it also could lead to deeper thinking outside of the romance and the social aspect and the social consequences of it. But that's... Yeah. You know, if, if, you, if you think of Har as romance as harlequin romances, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not, you're, they're all going to be kind of the same. They're yeah. all going to be kind of sappy. But real romances are like this story or mm -hmm. like Dracula, where oh, yeah. it is so much more than just yes there's a, a lot Harlequin more romance. substance than what i expected for uh romance but it still felt very romancy okay. like the parts even in dracula where it was talking about lucy's bow i was like speed mm -hmm. reading through those because i'm like then this doesn't interest me but i mean science mm -hmm. fiction has that sort of thing too where you yeah. have these very standard science fiction stories that just aren't very good mm -hmm. um Westerns have that, but yeah. there are still great Westerns that have been written. Yeah. Horror has that, but there are still great horror. You know, so you can't, you, you got to remember that what you're talking about when you talk about the genre romance is mm -hmm. really the lowest common denominator. Yes. And that there are some very, very top notch examples. Oh, no, of I, I out agree there. with that. And I totally am aware of that, but they still just don't interest me. Yeah. <laughs> and this one was one of those ones where it's like if it wasn't for the scientific element and being able to make up my own deeper substance it would have been i probably would not have liked this mm -hmm. but because of the interesting philosophical and ethical things that it brought up for me and the ways i was experiencing that personally i enjoyed it mm -hmm. but yes not a top tail for me okay mm -hmm. so if you want to look it up the original story is in the great science fiction stories you can find this in used markets yep um <clears throat> i'm trying to think where else i I recently came across it. It's in another anthology, more recent anthology, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, but Or, of course, the PDF of The Amazing Stories issue is free online yep. if you want to do a Google search for that and uh, read it there. And then you get 
that cool old artwork. Along yes, with it the too. artwork is again <laughs> another really stunning selection of artwork in that particular one too, mm -hmm. including the cover. This was yes. the cover story. The cover artwork is really uh, good. It's not exactly a scene from the book, but it's it still is drawing. It reflects a well. scene from the story, but mm -hmm. it is drawing from the concept of the story, and it's really good. And it's a, a really Beautifully cool done. illustration. Mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, look this up and. Uh, the novel is currently in print by the um, British Library Publishing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's they they have been publishing a lot of cool science fiction, Good. especially anthologies and keep it up, my dudes. Nonfiction about the genre written that um, is done by Mike Ashley, mm -hmm. uh, and so they they've done a lot of them in on science fiction and on horror. That nice. are just amazing books Very nice. that they've brought into print, and and most most of the science mostly British classic mm -hmm. science fiction, which is why they published the four sided. That's Triangle. probably what they have. Yeah, access so to. <laughs> if you look them up on their website, you can order it right <clears throat> off their website or from Book Depository. I think is where I found mine. They okay. have they offer a lot of it, and nice. and they offer free shipping out of the UK, which is Unheard amazing of. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Because it gets pricey. Yeah, I, I typically, to get something from the UK, I'm typically paying more than the book yeah. cost. Yeah. But not if you go to Book Depository. It's a, an arm of um, Amazon. Oh, okay. They own Book Depository, and they offer free international shipping. Nice. And Very they nice. get it to you in like a week and a half. Yeah, which that's other, nice. other book places from the UK do not ship that quickly but if you have independent sellers you want to support please do yeah so yeah uh, you can find the four-sided triangle then you just can't find the movie yeah i will find it somewhere <laughs> yeah your husband probably yeah has it. I, i'll put my husband <laughs> on it in 20 seconds like found it yeah we just have to buy a korean dvd player <laughs> heard that one before well actually i did see it on <clears throat> on youtube oh okay but that's not the best way to watch movies, no. I don't think. Yeah, YouTube is definitely downgrading a lot of their quality, and you, too. you know, if you, if you want a Blu-ray of your movies, you can't. Yeah. I haven't found anybody selling that. Bummer. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, interesting story. Not yeah. quite a great story. But a, a historically though. significant science fiction mm -hmm. story and a great contribution from a British author to the very beginning of the golden age of science fiction, dispelling yep. the myth that it was an American institution. Yay! Um, and that's all I got to say about it. Yeah, that's really all I have to say, too. So, okay. if you like drama, read it. Yeah, so like us, subscribe to us, come on back for more of this. Leave comments if you've read this story or something similar or have any thoughts whatsoever about this topic. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear it. So thanks for joining us, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.